Hi guys, today we're taking a look at the world's first 4K OLED gaming monitor with a dual mode feature. This is the LG Ultra Gear 32GS95UE, aimed at both PC and console gamers. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. So I'll be testing this out and seeing how good the picture quality is, seeing how well it performs as a gaming monitor on both a console and PC in both the 240Hz and 480Hz modes, together with testing it out for productivity purposes. Plus I'll show some of the other features it has, highlighting any pros and cons to give you a better idea if it's worth getting or not. But before I begin, if you're new to the channel, hope you can support me by subscribing and hitting the bell icon to get notified of my next release. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Let's begin by unboxing it and seeing what you get inside the packaging. You get a monitor stand, a monitor arm, a cover for the ports area, a box containing some accessories. It has a HDMI 2.1 cable, a display port 1.4 cable, a USB type A to type B cable, a power cable with a clover leaf connector, a small clip used as a cable holder, a power adapter with a DC connector, some documentation and finally underneath you've got the monitor. On the back of the monitor you have the VESA mounting point which is a 100 by 100 millimeters allowing you to use different monitor arms or even wall mount it. Attaching the monitor stand is really easy and you don't need any additional tools to put it together. You just place the monitor arm in position and it locks into place. Then attach the monitor stand by tightening the two screws which are underneath and the monitor arm can be easily removed from the back by pressing down on this button and lifting away. The back of the monitor monitor has a smooth finish with the LG Ultra Gear logo at the top which has a purple reflective finish and the design of the LEDs has changed from the 2023 models which now goes around the mounting point for the monitor arm and doesn't protrude out. Making the monitor pretty thin weighing just under 5.5 kilos or 12.3 pounds without the stand making this monitor really quite light. You have the ports towards the bottom, which consists of two HDMI 2.1 ports, a display port 1.4, one USB-B 3.0 upstream port, two USB-A 3.0 downstream ports, and a power input. It would have been nice if the monitor didn't have a separate power adapter and it was integrated into the back. The monitor doesn't have a Type-C port or a KVM built in, which is a bit of a shame. Closer to the bottom, there's a joystick that gives access to the OSD, allowing you to adjust the settings. Underneath the monitor, there's a Kensington locking point and a headphone jack and there's two notches on either side and this is where you'd attach a small clip you get in the packaging for cable management for your mouse cable. Then there's a dual mode button which we'll take a closer look at later on. Coming around the front of the monitor it has an anti-glare matte coating on the screen and is black with thin bezels on each of the sides. The monitor looks clean with its 32 inch display weighing just under 9 kilos or 19.8 pounds with a stand. The design of the monitor arm and stand has changed from their previous models and is the same as the one on LG's 39GS95QE which is a monitor I reviewed a couple of weeks back and you can take a look at that review by clicking the link in the corner or the link in the description. It's made of metal with a dark grey finish and has ultra gear written on the back with a matte finish. Below that is a gap for cable management which has a light purple accent around it helping to direct cables towards the back of the stand. I quite like the new L-shaped design as it doesn't take up too much space on my desk giving me the ability to position it closer to a wall as you can see here and if you're wondering my desk is 150 centimeters by 70 centimeters deep. The stand provides a really stable base for the monitor and size wise I've given some dimensions on the screen if you were after sizing of it just hit pause to see those values. You can easily make adjustments to the monitor as you can move it up and down, tilt it forwards and backwards, swivel it left and right and it pivots 90 degrees to give a portrait display. The picture quality on this monitor is stunning. Colors look vibrant and sharp on the WOLED display, giving a 16 by nine aspect ratio that provides a 3840 by 2160 P resolution. And as this has an OLED panel, you don't get any light bleed. And with the self-lighting pixels providing inky blacks, which makes any dark scenes look amazing. It supports HDR10 and has a DCI P3 98.5% color gamut with a color depth of 1.0 7 billion together with a contrast ratio of 1.5 million to 1 giving vivid colors with great contrast levels so any creativity related work looks really good on here 
viewing angles from left to right and up and down are excellent with no reduction in picture quality. Text on the monitor in 4K is excellent with no frigging around the text with it looking really sharp. LG have upgraded to using their MLA Plus technology to enhance brightness levels from 200 nits to 275 nits in both SDR and HDR peak brightness. And in addition, it has VESA Display HDR True Black 400, ensuring that the monitor will deliver at least 400 nits of peak brightness, with it providing an average picture level peak brightness of 1000 nits, which is what I was seeing on my light meter. And performance was pretty good in a bright room, providing quite an impressive experience. LG have gone for a matte finish, providing an anti-glare low reflection coating on the display, which you have on the majority of gaming monitors out there. Unlike the glossy finish you get on an OLED TV, this helps to reduce the screen reflections from ambient lighting, especially in very bright rooms, or if you work next to a window. It's still very usable, whereas in contrast, a standard OLED TV, this wouldn't be so great in a bright room especially when there's light coming directly onto the screen as it literally reflects like a mirror. The colors and picture quality are excellent together with it being really sharp and with the high brightness output, it's much more usable in a bright environment. There's even a peak brightness option allowing you to flip between off, low and high. But on the negative side, the anti-glare low reflection technology can reduce color representation slightly on the display. And what this means is that the colors wouldn't seem as good as you'd see on an OLED TV where they literally pop out. But personally, I didn't feel it affected picture quality that much as it still looked really good. Perhaps in future, it would be great if they could introduce two variants of the monitor where you could choose between either a matte or a glossy screen. But playing any color rich games with vibrant colors, the screen does an excellent job. And with the flicker free panel, the monitor reduces eye strain. Onto gaming on this monitor, there's two HDMI ports supporting HDMI 2.1 at the full bandwidth of 48 gigabits per second, meaning there's no restrictions on there to limit performance, so there's no artifacting. I've got it connected to my Xbox Series X, and looking in the settings, you can see everything is checked other than Dolby Vision for gaming, and looking in video modes, allow Dolby Vision is disabled, and allow auto low latency is disabled, but that's fine as it's already in the lowest latency mode as it's optimized for gaming. So this means that games that support 120Hz at 4K will be supported by this monitor with the added feature of variable refresh rate or VRR on the Xbox Series X, S and PlayStation 5 giving an awesome gaming experience. Now gaming on this monitor gives a seriously impressive experience with the 32 inch OLED display with gameplay being ultra smooth with no screen tearing or stuttering as it supports Nvidia G-Sync and AMD FreeSync Premium Pro. It has a 0.03 millisecond response time making this monitor so fast, but obviously you're limited to 120 hertz on the current gen consoles. I've played a number of different games on this monitor and they've looked incredible with really sharp and vibrant colors together with inky black levels, giving a stunning experience with excellent contrast levels. In 4K, the clarity levels are just stunning, giving a really immersive gaming experience. On to testing the monitor with my PC, which is a custom build PC from CyberPower with a pretty impressive spec. It has an AMD Ryzen 9 7950X3D 16 core processor, AMD RX 7900 graphics card with 24 gigs, 32 gigs of RAM and a two terabyte SSD. Now gaming at 4K, 240 Hertz is truly epic. The clarity levels are stunning in 4K with it being so smooth at 240 Hertz, providing an awesome gaming experience. But you'll need a decent graphics card that can handle that. I also did a UFO test to test motion blur and this looked good with no motion blur at the higher refresh rate. Now testing the dual mode functionality and just to note, you can only fully utilize the higher refresh rates on a PC as there's no added benefit with this functionality on the current gen consoles where the refresh rates are limited to 120 Hertz. To activate dual mode, you just need to press this button underneath the monitor and this will flip the resolution over to 1080p at 480 hertz. And when you press it again, it deactivates dual mode, returning the resolution back to 4K at 240 hertz. When dual mode's activated, you'll get a 1080p resolution and with this, you can get a 10-bit color depth and HDR is supported. When you press the button, the screen briefly goes black, then it reappears with the relevant resolution and it's best to do this before you go into your 
game so it initially starts up in the correct resolution. Doing a UFO motion blur test at 480 hertz looked good again with no motion blur and if you were a competitive gamer you can switch the screen to a smaller size and you can do this by going into settings game adjust dual mode and this is where you can select either 24 or 27 inches with the remaining screen having a black border around it and this is for a situation where you didn't want such a large area to focus on as most competitive gamers would be gaming ideally at 24 inches or 27 inches for the optimal experience and seriously in this mode the experience is unbelievably smooth giving an insanely good gaming experience in 1080p when the dual mode is activated the max refresh rate supported is 480 hertz and with the reduced resolution the picture quality does get reduced so it doesn't look as sharp as when it's in 4k Pixel density in 4K is excellent, but when activating dual mode, I did notice a lot more frigging around text. And even when gaming, the text and gameplay clarity wasn't as sharp. And even when reducing the screen size down, this didn't change that. The monitor is also great for productivity with the DisplayPort 1.4 port. You're able to get a refresh rate of 240 Hertz HDR, G-Sync and 10-bit color support providing excellent color and contrast levels giving a good working area. Perfect for displaying multiple windows which helps with multitasking allowing me to have multiple windows open on a single screen. Even working in Adobe Premiere Pro is good and working on Photoshop or Lightroom was excellent with the colors being vibrant and sharp. Pixel density in 4K is excellent. The monitor doesn't support picture in picture or picture by picture but personally for this size of monitor I didn't think it was a big deal not having that. It would have been nice if it had a Type-C port together with a built-in KVM which would have been quite useful allowing me to flip between a PC and Mac but obviously this is only useful if you wanted to use it with multiple devices or even a laptop. The monitor has a headphone jack at the front so you're able to plug in your headphones and LG have finally added some speakers. The method they've used is pretty impressive and they've created something called pixel sound which is essentially speakers behind the screen instead of having them either backwards or downwards firing. The sound basically emits through the screen and to be honest the sound quality on these are really good with some depth too and I'd say they're definitely better than the speakers on the majority of monitors out there where the sound is generally very tinny but it can't replace using a gaming headset where that would give more of a surround sound experience. Nevertheless it's pretty good and have a listen to this to give you a rough idea of what the sound quality is like. Entertainment wise so watching movies or TV shows this monitor is perfect with the OLED panel giving an awesome picture quality so you could use your console to stream from or even connect up an Amazon Fire Stick as it has multiple HDMI ports. But it's a shame there's no remote with it but I guess if you're using it with an Amazon Fire Stick you could just use the remote that comes with the Fire Stick but that doesn't give you access to the OSD of the menu. Taking a look at the settings and menus you've got a button at the back which you can access underneath the monitor allowing you to access the OSD to optimize your display settings like the brightness and contrast together with various other settings like seeing an FPS counter or a crosshair. Then there's the game overlay that shows you what the game you're currently playing is running at and you can adjust the game mode from here too. It has a very familiar interface which is available on most of the newer LG monitors. The lights on the back look cool and you have the ability to change them to a variety of different colors plus you can have it cycling through colors or even turn them off. But due to the design of the monitor it's only noticeable if you look around the back whereas coming around the front you wouldn't notice they were on unless the monitor was switched off. So I'd say if you wanted some more ambient lighting you'd be better off adding an LED strip at the back of the monitor. Moving on to screen burning or image retention which is one of the biggest concerns with OLEDs and this is where an image is permanently displayed onto the screen. For example if you constantly had the same static window displayed on the screen or if there was a logo in the corner that logo could potentially burn in and remain even when you switch channels or change to a different source. To protect against this the monitor does have OLED care options. First of all you have the screen move which moves the screen slightly at regular intervals in four directions to prevent image sticking. Then there's the screen saver which automatically turns off the screen when it's idle for a certain period of time. Next Next we have image cleaning which corrects screen problems which occur when the monitor is turned on for long periods of time. As a minimum LG recommends the screen move and the screen saver is turned on to prevent any image retention. 
So in summary, LG Ultra Gear's new 2024 32 inch OLED gaming monitor is such an awesome gaming monitor. Positives wise, LG have used the MLA Plus technology to enhance brightness levels, making the picture quality even more vibrant. And with the anti-glare low reflection panel, it's perfect in allowing you to use the monitor in a bright room with minimal glare, helping to reduce eye strain. It has two HDMI 2.1 ports and a DisplayPort 1.4 with a lightning fast 0.03 millisecond response time together with a 4k resolution giving a 240 hertz refresh rate making it perfect for gaming on both a console and pc and it's even great for productivity usage with it having an excellent level of clarity and i'd say the dual mode functionality is a game changer allowing you to flip the resolution over to 1080p with a 480 hertz refresh rate and you're also able to reduce the screen down to either 24 or 27 inches making it perfect for competitive gamers i love the fact they've introduced speakers which actually sound good and i'd say it helps to make this monitor perfect for all-round use so to use it for entertainment purposes too the new monitor stand is great with it taking minimal space up on your desk without any compromise to its stability negatives wise the anti-glare low reflection technology can reduce color representation slightly on the display it would have been great if it came with a type c port and a kvm and i was disappointed to see it didn't come with a remote control but seriously these are just minor items and I wouldn't say they're a deal breaker in any way as this has to be one of the best all-round monitors you can currently get at this moment in time. Price wise it's not cheap coming in at just under $1,400 when compared to a large OLED TV but this is primarily aimed at console and competitive PC gamers so there's no comparison as this is optimized for gaming. So there you have it you've come to the end of another video and I hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Details are in the description below including purchasing links and if you have any questions let me know in the comments below. For those of you who've got to the end of this video please leave a comment with OLED32 as it's awesome to see who's got to the end of my video and hopefully you guys enjoyed it. You can follow me on my socials, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to be notified of my next release. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.